I have several things to go over with this video. Number one is study from the New England Journal of Medicine showing how the virus worsens with lockdowns and forced mask wearing and social distancing. I'm also going to show you an article from the British Medical Journal how politicians are very corrupt, especially when it comes to COVID-19, and how they're suppressing science. I'm going to show you how the definition of pandemic has changed for the worse. I'm going to show you what percentage of COVID-positive patients who are symptomatic, what percentage wear the mask. I'm going to show you how states are losing the war when it comes to forcing people to wear masks in the economic lockdown. And related to that, who are the psychotics when it comes to politics? And who are the psychotics when it comes to food? And I'm going to show you an incredible example of uh, psychosis when you combine politics and the wrong diet and who to avoid. This is all nutrition related. This is my forte. And um, I can't not mention the political side of this. I'm going to show you a ridiculous quote unquote breakthrough that NBC is touting that might be the reason why some COVID-19 patients are dying. Although this has been known for years and it was released back in March and it was squashed over and over again. Not only was this squashed, but I've been squashed. FTC made me take down 13 videos. I'm going to catch up with you on what I've been doing and I'm going to show you how your voice is not censored and give you some examples of that and how important it is for you to know this. I'm going to show you what I've been doing, what I've been preparing for actually for the last 15 months, and I'll give you something to do at the very end of this video. All right, let's get started. This first study is published in the New England Journal of Medicine. It says even a military enforced quarantine can't stop the virus, study reveals, according to the American Institute for Economic Research. So they do have a link to the study. The New England Journal of Medicine has published a study that goes to the heart of the issue of lockdowns. And now the AIER has long highlighted studies that show no gain in virus management from lockdowns, even as early as April. To test further might seem superfluous, but for whatever reason, governments all over the world, including in the U.S., still are under the impression that they can affect viral transmissions through a range of non-pharmaceutical interventions, like mandatory masks, forced human separation, stay-at-home orders, bans of gatherings, business to school closures, and extreme travel restrictions. Nothing like this has been tried on the scale in the whole of human history, so one might suppose that policymakers have some basis for the confidence that these measures accomplish something. So what they did is they took 1,848 new recruits into the Marines, and they were all volunteered, and what they were told to do was to wear double face cloth masks and do the social distancing. You can't leave ma uh, campus, and you were not allowed to have personal electronics and other items that might contribute to so surface transmission, they routine routinely wash their hands. Now, the control group did not wear a mask. They walked around. They did not do social distancing. And what were the results? Well, it shows right here. It's, I'm going to read it to you. The cumulative number of recruits with positive PCR results of the ones that did the double face mask covering and the lockdown, etc., 2.8% of them got the virus. They tested positive for it. And of the control group, the non-participants, 1.7% of them got the virus, according to the PCR testing. So this shows that when you mandate lockdowns and mask wearing and social distancing and, and hand washing, you're more likely to get the virus. And it makes total sense because every day you want to exercise your immune system. The virus is going to go wherever it's going to go. It's endemic in 70 days. The next paper I want to go over is an editorial in the British Medical Journal. It says, COVID-19, politicization, corruption, and suppression of science. It's basically saying that politicians are taking advantage of this pandemic in order to further their power. It says right here, politicians often claim to follow the science, but that is a misleading oversimplification. Science is rarely absolute. It rarely applies to every setting or every population. It doesn't make sense to slavishly follow science or evidence. And in the rest of this editorial, it goes over many examples of how politicians are being tyrannical and taking over too much power. What is a pandemic? Well, this definition has been changed. It says, occurring over a wide geographic area, such as multiple countries or continents, and typically affecting a significant proportion of the population. What they're missing is clinical severity. The definition of pandemic used to say clinical severity. So as long as they change the definition of the word and they apply it incorrectly, they can do whatever they want and convince you that this is a scary thing. There's a lot of cases. There's a lot of testing. We have green. This is cases. 
And you can see it climbing up through November. The blue is testing. The red is deaths. So this is a pandemic of positive tests. This information right here is from the CDC. And it says that case patients right here, I got the, my cursor on it. These are people who are symptomatic of COVID-19 and positive test. The control participants are people that are not positive for COVID-19 and they do not have any symptoms. So it shows right here 70.6% of these patients, the case patients, always wore a mask. 14.4% often wore a mask. 85% of the people in this study, as reported by the CDC, always or often wore a mask. So if masks worked, that should be 0%. It's 85%. Here are a series of graphs that I am taking from Tony Heller. He's on YouTube. You can find him on YouTube. And these are states and countries that are suffering under their own mask mandates. This first one is New Mexico. The mask mandate started in May, and here's where they're at now. Here's Colorado. The mask mandate started in July, and here's where they're at now. Here's the UK. Mask mandate started in July. Here's where they're at now. This is Spain. The mask mandate started in May, and here's where they're at now. Here's Montana. The mask mandate started in July. Here's where they're at now. The orange line is Montana. They have a mask mandate beginning in July. Wyoming never had a mask mandate, and they're doing much better than Montana. Here are four countries with the initial uptick of COVID-19 deaths per million people. And then through the summer, it got better. And Italy, France, and Belgium all forced mask wearing in a lockdown. And Sweden did not. And you can see where Sweden's at now. I hope I've given you enough data to prove that lockdowns and forced mask wearing and social distancing is not the solution for this virus. But why would politicians take this information and become tyrannical with it? Science says liberals, not conservatives, are psychotic. This is from June 9th, 2016. The American Journal of Political Science actually published this initially in 2012, and then they corrected it in 2016. And that correction is that the liberal politicians are the ones that are psychotic, not the, con the conservative ones. It says in the paper, psychoticism is associated with traits such as tough-mindedness, risk-taking, sensation-seeking, impulsivity, and authoritarianism. It says right here, the erroneous report has been cited 45 times. Turns out liberals are the real authoritarians. Having said all that, this is another study, Nutrition and Health, the Association Between Eating Behaviors and Various Health Parameters, a matched sample study, published in PLOS1. Differences in suffering from various chronic conditions between the different dietary habit groups. These are the dietary habit groups. The first one is vegetarian, that's this first column. The second one is carnivorous diet rich in fruits and vegetables. The third one is carnivorous diet less rich in meat. And the fourth one is carnivorous diet rich in meat. At the very bottom it says mental illness, anxiety disorder, or depression. 9.4% of vegetarians have this mental illness. The carnivorous diet rich in fruits and vegetables are at 4.8%, much better, by about half. The carnivorous diet less rich in meat it ticks up a little bit, 5.8%. But the lowest percentage is carnivorous diet rich in meat, 4.5%. Of them have mental illness, anxiety, disorder, or depression. The more meat you eat, the less depressed you are. The less meat you eat, the more mental illness you have. Having said that, going back to June 11th of 2020, remember in Seattle, there was about six blocks that were blocked off by very liberal-minded people and what happened was the homeless people stole their food and they said send vegan meat and soy this is antifa's seattle encampment called chaz was raided by the homeless and the people of chaz says we need more food to keep the area operational please if possible bring vegan meat substitutes fruit oats soy products etc anything to help us eat and they also laid down some dirt and planted a garden just to show you the relationship between political ideology and diet. There is a correlation there. And now you know that there are people who are trying to control your diet and your life. And you can identify them easier with this information. Okay, moving on to the next subject. This is NBC. Breakthrough finding reveals why certain COVID-19 patients die. It says right here, research shows COVID-19 patients with life-threatening illness have antibodies that disable key immune system proteins called 
interferons. Where have we heard the term interferon before? Well, if you go back to the beginning of this COVID-19 problem, it, we're talking about March and even earlier, Judy Mikovits. She talked about interferons. She talked about why bats are the problem when it comes to the spread of this virus and why were bats being experimented with in these weapons labs for infectious disease as a weapon. It's because bats make more interferon than any other mammal on planet Earth. Why is that? It's because they fly. They flap their wings. There are mammals that are flying in the air. There's no other mammal that does that. So bats have to make extra, extra interferon because they need to have a clean immune system. They have to be strong inside. And interferon basically, just to put it very simply, activates antioxidants. It activates the immune system. And it makes their, the bat's immune system very strong. So if you're a lab technician and you're trying to create biological warfare, you pick a bat. You put the virus in the bat. It's got that super strong amount of interferon. And it's less likely to die. And then you let the virus grow. And you can extract it and you can manipulate the virus. But the bat is the reservoir to grow more and more of the virus without the bat dying because of the extra interferon. I've been saving this video as an open tab on my iPad for nine months since February when I first saw this. And I'm gonna show you a minute and 20 seconds. And most importantly, they have a hair trigger release of that signaling molecule I just talked about, yeah. interferon alpha. So that's an antiviral. It's a most powerful. I, I brought a bottle of it with us. You know, that was my first research job at Fort Detroit. It was purify interferon alpha and give it to humans. It was the magic bullet of cancer, March 31st, 1980. That was just before I graduated from University of Virginia. And I said, that's what I want to do. So I got a job June 10th, 1980, started making, put the first interferon that, that went in yeah. for cancer. The magic bullet. Uh, so it was the, the magic, magic bullet, bullet for cancer. Yeah, it turns out it was. It a, turns out it was a very, yeah. but we don't yeah. use it anymore yeah. because we didn't think about it. So I brought my, this is a homeopathic called Paximmune that some colleagues have made over the years. And you can buy this on the internet and I have it in the slide because you could spray this in your nasal passages in yeah, your lungs. Spray, right. And so you would have your hair trigger antiviral right there. Yeah. So you need nothing other than this. Vitamin C will dampen down that NF kappa yeah. B inflammatory that's, that's, that's pathway. One, right. So we have things ready to go um, for these viruses. In addition, should, should you be exposed to keeping which it Which are natural system, products now. Which are natural products. Now, if you don't know who Judy Mikovits is, she's got a couple books. One's called Plague, the other one's called Plague of Corruption. And she has been Dr. Fauci's enemy for many decades. Now you heard in the video, as a new graduate, she wanted to work on interferon and making that as a product, not only as a treatment for viruses and cancer, but also as a prevention of viruses, as in the form of a very easy, cheap vaccine. And it's an oral thing and it's completely natural. And that was 1980. And that was pretty much just all discarded because why would any pharmaceutical company have any competition when it comes to the supplements made by Mother Nature? So when Judy Mikovits was uh, given uh, an interview um, on Facebook and YouTube, she was taken down like consistently back in March, April, May. And then a, a video came out called Plandemic. And I believe it has remained up. But initially the marketing for Plandemic, the, the video series or movie, uh, was taken down consistently. Any medical doctor talking about the pandemic, talking about COVID-19, they were taken down, their videos, their posts, and it's because big tech does not want you to be well because that is bad for the economy. And especially YouTube, which is owned by Google, those two companies, just think of them as being the same. They're owned by Alphabet, that's the parent company. Alphabet owns pharmaceutical companies. And so I can see Alphabet buying Google, which has YouTube, to control the narrative. It's part of their marketing plan to m stop people from talking about how to get well using natural methods. That's their, the way they operate. So I've been censored too by the FTC. They sent me a letter. I ended up taking down 13 videos about coronavirus. They said, if you talk about any of the 1,100 coronaviruses, you are therefore talking about COVID-19 
and you're not allowed to sell any products related to that. You're not allowed to talk about any products, especially if, if they are part of your um, uh, apothecary. So I took down those videos and I've been censored and I haven't really said much. I'm getting off of YouTube. It's been a couple months since I posted anything and I've been working for 15 months on a project. Before I show you that project, I'm going to show you that you are not censored when you do something like this. This is my website out of 2,714 reviews. It's five stars. And you can go to this website. You can click on um, at the very, this is the front page right here. So scroll down, scroll down. And right here are the reviews. And you can click through and you can see what people are saying. This is the Google reviews. 4.9 out of 5 out of 232 reviews on Google. This is what I've been working on. This is, again, the front page of my website. You scroll down a little bit, and here it is, says to dis discover the formula that improves your health, the follow the physiology formula. Click to download your free copy of this book. No email required. Watch. I click on this button right here, and it goes to this other page, and here's a little welcome page. Here's a little video of me for a minute talking about Go ahead and download it. Oh, look, it's right there. So you can just start clicking through on the arrow, page by page, and start reading through it. You can download it. The first 38 pages have 50 references. Besides that ebook, which took six months to write, it's free to you. I also have a video course on file the physiology. That's free. I also made an ebook on the office and the practitioners, and that's free. I have some videos that go along with it, with interviews and a walkthrough tour, and that's free. So I have a lot of free information to you. This page right here is being developed. It's not quite done right now. And I'm going to show you, here's an interview of Carrie Credit, Kristen Clore, and Dr. Amanda Childress. These are my practitioners at work. We work together, Dr. Tag Taggy Ben said. And then here's that introductory course, on the video course that's free. And over here we have the ketosis course, $47. Here we have protect yourself from viruses course at $7. I made this course right here because the FTC made me take down my videos where I talked about coronavirus. I do not talk about coronavirus in this video course. I give you great information that is applicable to help your immune system deal with viruses. Here's this follow the physiology introductory course, and here's this mold toxicity course. This is a big deal. It's $247. It's for people who are serious. You have mold in your basement. You're suffering from mold toxicity in your lungs or in your sinuses or in your heart. It's causing high blood pressure. You can also call it candida, yeast, or fungus. I had this in 2015 and 16. I thought I was going to die February 3rd, 2016. And I figured out nine months later it's because I had mold in my office. We moved out of the office. And then long story short, I have this course. 